So here's a quick overview of Rapid Change ATC and Onefinity's Pro Series Buildbotics controller machines. As you can see, we've got the screen open here. It's a very simple setup. You go into the settings, the on program start has all the nuts and bolts. It starts out with all the settings for your magazine and your machine through here. The rest down through here is all code. So this this whole file gets pasted in on the program start section. The on tool change section is this section here and the code gets pasted into here. Now Onefinity just recently upgraded the controller to version 1.4.0 which is what I have loaded here and the nice thing about that are the macros. Now when you fire up your machine the buildbotics controller does not persist the tool the tool length offset or the work offset so they need to be set up every time you open the machine setting your work coordinate system offset is um, however you do it uh, but for the rapid change ATC integration it's quite simple now I've already got this machine set up at home and it's actually sitting at my parking position which I use G28 as a parking position. I've got a macro here that will send it to this position and in the post processor at the end of the file it will rise to the Z height of that G28 position and then move an X and Y back gets it off the workpiece, gets it out of the way, and we have a post processor for Vectric, and we'll be developing post processors for other CAM softwares, CAD CAM softwares, in the very near future. So I've taken the time to set up some macros here. One thing that's that could change in the future is reading the tool. On this line here, in the status area you'll see that it's reporting tool zero as the active tool and that's not the case if we come over here to click this macro button current tool I get a message telling me what the controller actually knows as the current tool hopefully we'll be able to figure out how to tie it into this value so that it'll report and this won't be as necessary. But the machine needs to know what tool is in the spindle before making tool changes. If it thinks it has the wrong tool in the spindle, it's gonna have unwanted consequences. So we do have, the current tool is tool one. Now if you wanna change the tool on startup, I've got these macros here and I'll show those to you. say set to a one is this little bit of code here with the one right here designating the tool pretty simple to set up the macros really work well with our workflow saves a lot of time and headache the tool change macros are quite simple load one macro is simply m6t1 now you have to use a macro. You can't just type in M6T1 into the command line. It throws an error. The tool change command has to either come from one of these macros or from a G code file. But Onefinity's made it very handy with these macros so that it's the click of a button to change tools. Go to control and I'll just show you how these work. So I can when you fire up your machine, chances are there's going to be a tool in the spindle. The controller is going to start up with tool zero every time. So say we had tool three in the spindle, 
we simply click the set three button macro button current tool equals three okay if you want to check sometimes it's a good idea to check to make sure you can click this macro current tool and it will tell you the current tool and you'll see that we did change it to three so we're going to change it back to one okay current tool one now the great thing about tool length offset is you only have to set the offset for your workpiece once so I'm going to demonstrate that now we've got tool one is in the spindle and it has been picked from the magazine so it's been touched off on the tool setter so it has a TLO or a tool length offset applied to the cutter now that's separate from the work coordinate Z and we're going to use the probing function to set that with a touch plate so let's move to our zero position which is in the center of the piece or approximately the center and we'll get our touch plate this isn't a fancy one just for setting Z we'll move Z down to just above it there we go probe Z check the probe this is a nice feature make sure everything's working next done Z zero and we're there so let's load our file and hit go now when this file quits running I will show you how the tool recognition works Right there, it's probing away from the beam to determine whether the... to determine whether the clamping nut is present, which lets it know whether it's successfully loaded or unloaded the tool. Now, I'm not actually cutting because I didn't really want to make a mess or take a whole lot of time. Just demonstrating how it changes tools. Only having to set the work offset one time at the beginning of the file. Everything else is hands free and automatic. Once you use rapid change on your machine, you'll wonder how you ever did anything without it. And you notice at the end of the file it went back to my G28 position. It's very easy to set up. It's simply a matter of finding the position that you want to park your machine at, going into the MDI, typing in G28.1, and there you have it. Our post processor uses G28.1 as a parking position at the end of the file, 
it's editable you can change that to just the work offset or a G53 position our post processor for Vectric has a coded in six second pause after the tool is measured wait six seconds to to allow it to spin up and then once it's done cutting and the spindle turns off it will wait six seconds before going to try to make the tool change to make sure that the spindle has stopped spinning and that's configurable in the post processor and I'll be doing a video on post processors very soon so now I'm going to demonstrate the tool recognition I'm going to block the beam when it goes to drop off tool 4 here and I'm going to do it twice so that you can see what happens after the first attempt if it fails it will try a second time and a, upon a second failure it will move to the manual load position which I've got it set up 50 millimeters in front of the magazine centered in X on the tool setter so we're going to change to tool 2 and what I'm going to do is remove the tool to simulate it failing to pick up a tool. Load tool 2. Of course it's going to drop it off. I'm going to block it. So it thinks it failed to pick up because I was blocking the beam. It moves over to the manual load position and we get a message up. Tool 4 failed to unload. Unload Tool 4 and click OK to continue. Guess there isn't an OK. But you get the idea. Now it goes back to pick up Tool 2. And of course it failed to pick up tool 2, so it moves to the manual load position. And I'm not going to wrench that on for the sake of time. Hit continue. And it goes to probe the tool. The tool recognition makes it fail safe. Fully automatic tool changes on the BuildBotix Onefinity Pro Series machines. Rapid Change ATC is a game changer and it can be yours. Happy tool changes and thanks for watching.